Welcome to Southwest Florida Real Estate Update, hosted by local Realtors, Jim, Michael, and Morgan York of the York Real Estate Group of Downing Fry Realty. Our show will bring you the most up-to-date information on the local real estate market, featuring the leading experts in the real estate field. Hi, and welcome to the Southwest Florida Real Estate Update. I'm Michael York of the York Real Estate Group, and today we're joined by our host, Jim York, and his guest, Don Ross Jr., President of Ross Title and Escrow. Thank you, Michael, for the introduction. Well, Don, thanks for coming on the show again. It's been so long. Thank yep. you, Jim. <laughs> so uh, for our viewers that maybe haven't seen it, just give us a little short brief about yourself. I'm a local attorney, been practicing law more than 30 years. I'm an owner at Downey Fry. I've been their counsel for about 30 years. I own Ross Title and Escrow. We have seven people. Uh, my manager has been with me over 30 years, her daughter 20 years, her sister 10 years, her niece 4 years, she's only 23. Right. Uh, and a uh, you know, very tight group. We do a fair amount of closings. Hopefully we do a decent job. Uh, located on the corner of 951 in 6th Avenue North and right across from Pastrami Dance. Right. Well, you do our, our closings. So Thank you. Do a Thank great you. job. Appreciate so it. So on the board has changed some of the contracts coming up for next year. and. We, want to we left off on one part. Let's talk about inspections. That's a new area here, right? Well, one of the gray areas uh, post Irma was uh, potential future assessments and, and what happens to uh, people in a homeowners association or a condominium association where there's been damage to the common elements. I mean, that, that, that was gray in the, the contract that now exists. If they implement the one that I have access to, uh, it will relieve the seller from any responsibility for portions of the common elements in condominiums and homeowners associations that the seller does not have a direct obligation to maintain. Now there are common elements that the seller must maintain, like right. if they have a porch, that's mm -hmm. usually a limited common element. If they have a cabana, that's a limited common element and, and they are specifically required to maintain that. Right. Uh, so it, it, it won't help them with that, but if it, a lot of trees got knocked down in the common areas or the clubhouse got hit, uh, and, and there, there may be a special assessment, but they haven't worked things out with the insurance adjusters yet, in fact it's still going on since Irma, uh, that is not a seller responsibility. Uh, Farbar in Comprehensive Rider B deals with homeowners associations, and again Farbar is a Florida Association right. of Realtors in the Florida Bar. Uh, and it specifically has in the, in the, the comprehensive rider that you know that the common elements are not part of what the seller is responsible to maintain. You know, after Irma with Nabor, right. you know, I, I was on the phone with a number of different attorneys, and we could argue either uh, either side of it. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever side we wanted to be on, that's the side we yeah. argued. <laughs> honestly, so they they clarified that, which was nice. That that was a good change. In uh, wire fraud. Wire fraud, oh boy. Um, they have, uh, again, on the version that I have, which could be changed, uh, right above the buyer and seller signatures in big boldface print, a uh, big fat warning about wire fraud and how it's, it's pervasive and they need to call before they wire, independently verify the phone number, don't just take it off the email, mm -hmm. go look them up on the internet. And it also holds harmless uh, the escrow agent who's handling the money, money. i.e. Ross Title or right. you know, whoever. Um, it's good that it heightens awareness. It's good if it makes people nervous. They should be nervous. Uh, my caution to uh, realtors would be uh, don't uh, take a nap because of this. Um, this is not an absolute safeguard. There's already language in the contract, standard S, it holds the harmless for uh, things that the seller failed to disclose, late material defects, right. or the, the, you know, somebody who works with the seller failed to disclose. That has never, ever stopped uh, a buyer from suing a realtor in all my years as being counsel for Downing mm -hmm. Fry. Right. I mean, when, when people sue, they sue everybody, and they don't care about this. And in many cases, uh, the realtor actually makes an affirmative statement. Mm -hmm. So th you know this is failing to disclose right. in standard S. Uh, the wire fraud advisory 
you know, litigators, you know, it doesn't cost much more money to throw an extra defendant in there. And, and the, the, the dream for a litigator is to uh, get people fighting, the defendants fighting. Right. So they're going to throw you in anyways. But if it heightens awareness, it's wonderful. How about inspections? What changed there? Uh, inspections, uh, not, not, not a whole lot. Uh, the, uh, the inspection process is, is pretty much the same. They haven't done anything with permits. Uh, they've, they've reorganized certain disclosure uh, provisions in the contract, and so that's helpful. Um, you know, the, the, the condo association we already touched that's on. That's right, we did. The, um, the cap on risk of loss we right. touched on, uh, but uh, inspections, not a whole lot. How about termination? Terminations are different. Um, I they, hope they, so. they had a termination, <laughs> yeah, well, there's a lot of disagreement, I'm told, within the Legal Resources Committee over this, but the, you know, there's about 70 odd forms that Nabor uses. Uh, and the way I look at it, and everybody has their own opinion, uh, the primary documents, you know, seller's disclosure, listing agreements, uh, the sales agreements, those, those are the primary documents. Right. A lot of the forms are there to help the people to help the customers to help the realtors. That's right. You do not have to use them. Uh, you, you do not have to even use the seller's disclosure form that they have. You can come up with your own because mm -hmm. the, the legal requirements for seller disclosure are governed by the Johnson v. Davis line of cases that started in 1985. But this form helps people so they don't make mistakes. Makes and in fact, it over discloses to help keep Which them is safe. Yeah, it keeps them safe. But there's a termination form that's currently in existence, one form that they use for both, uh, you know, for the sellers and the buyers. That's right. They've modified both of those, and they've added language that the escrow agent may now require, you know, Ross Title or whoever, mm -hmm. may now require the sellers and the buyers to sign a termination of sales contract and deposit release directive. Mm -hmm. they, may re they may require that. And I looked at that and said, "That's vague." Well, I mean, what 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 what's happening is the the people holding the money don't want to take the risk of being sued. Right. It, it's that simple. So they want both. They have this form that, if it's signed, um, they're safe. Mm -hmm. But if somebody refuses to sign it you really have to go back to the sales contract and see if there's any requirement that they sign it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are certain things uh, in the contract that I, for example, will authorize a release on if, if the buyer is within the condominium review period, the three days. Okay. And if we can prove that, yes, they, they, they signed their receipt, and I, we look at the effective date of the contract, and is it within three days, and then we always check with the realtor, did you actually speak with the other agent? Did this get to them? Mm -hmm. We'll release it. I, I don't need the signature of the seller. Legally, mm -hmm. I don't need it. Need it. Okay, legally it's not necessary. Or if you have an as-is contract, is, is another days. example. Uh, it's in buyer's sole discretion that they may terminate the contract. Mm -hmm. They don't have to give a reason. They could just change their mind. Right. It could be the stock market. It could be you know, foreign events. You know, it could be many, many reasons. Uh, if, if I have an as-is contract, that's me personally, right. my company, and we can verify that it was communicated to the other side in writing and somebody followed it up with a phone call mm -hmm. and... Paper trail. Paper right. trail. Mm -hmm. uh, we release it. We don't need the seller's consent. But there are, and this is what I was told, some uh, title companies or law firms that, you know, we don't take any, we don't want to stick our neck out right. a millimeter. We want both sides to sign. Theoretically, if, if they insisted on something like that and I were representing a buyer and it was a condo review period and as is contract, I'd be threatened to sue them anyways. Mm -hmm. Because it's either a matter of statute or it's in buyer's sole discretion. Right. So, you know, it's not my concern that they're trying to cover their rear end. It's whether they're legal entitled to the money. Well, Don, I think we've covered everything on this first two series, okay? One sure. in the previous show and huh? one this one. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in 2019 on our monthly Same update, here, okay? Jim. And thank you for tuning in today. Thank and you. we'll see you in 2019. Thank you.
Thinking of buying or selling a home in Naples, Marco Island, Bonita, or Estero, Florida? Think of the most experienced York Real Estate Group, associated with the number one brokerage in Southwest Florida, Downing Fry Realty, which produces yearly real estate transactions of over a billion dollars. Jim, Michael, and Morgan make up the York Real Estate Group of Downing Fry Realty, with over $275 million in sales transactions, along with offering over 25 combined years experience in the local market. The Yorks can offer the experience and trust you need in a Realtor. Call them today at 239-273-6727 or visit their website at www.NaplesYorkRealEstate.com. Looking for a real estate closing agent in Southwest Florida? Ross Title and Escrow has over 25 years experience and has closed over 20,000 residential real estate transactions. Donald Ross Jr., president of Ross Title and Escrow and a practicing attorney in the state of Florida with a degree in taxation is here to service your needs. Call Mr. Ross or one of our four closing agents for a free consultation today. 239-200-0000. 